This is gonna be cool. <laughs> the topics and opinions expressed on the Dudes and Beer podcast are intended for an audience of 18 and up and are solely those of the host and guest. They neither reflect the opinions or values of either the sponsors of Dudes and Beer or your mother. I mean, seriously. Have you ever heard these guys? They'll talk about anything. Whoa! Whoa. Hey, you think they're gonna show it? <laughs> uh, they'll probably just blur it out. <laughs> Whoa, check it out, Beavis. Grab your beverages and turn up your interweb. Solving the world's problems 12 ounces at a time. It's Dudes and Beer. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. so many problems getting that <laughs> beer open. Hello, everybody, Hello. and hey. welcome to episode 83 of Dudes and Beer. I am Chris Jordan, your host. With me tonight is the great and awesome Nelson Kugel, oh, shit. Stephen Bishop. What's up, guys? Welcome to the What's first the edition of the oh, Dudes yeah. and Beer Cookout. Yeah. Uh, cookout, cookout. Hopefully to be one of the first of many where we sit out here. Right. I just got a grill for Christmas, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, we're going to sit out here and grill some stuff up and just talk while we grill, every, talk about what we're grilling. every day since you've gotten that grill, like you've that. used it for every meal, I think, so far. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so far. <laughs> so far. So far. And I'm okay with that. It's a beautiful grill. Right, I love it. it Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Randy. Uh, Houston co-host of the podcast. Um, and when we get back from this message from our sponsor, uh, we'll talk about some of the greats that have been taken from us in 2016, talk about what we're putting on the grill as we put it on, everything else, right yeah. after this message. Hey, he don't even have a license, Lisa. Free drunk driver. Hey, everybody. Chris Jordan, host of the Dudes and Beer podcast here. Has this ever happened to you? Tired of looking in your rearview mirror after a couple of drinks with friends or worrying about no refusal weekends and DUI stops? Are you planning a night on the town and want an easy, safe way to get around while still having fun? Well, Fair is the ride service for you. Simply download the easy-to-use and free Fair app from the Google Play Store or iTunes Marketplace and use promo code DUDES10 every time you ride with Fair to save 10% off your ride. Have a Fair driver you liked riding with? You can not only give them a review and tip, but you can add them to your preferred driver's list on your Fair app and request them every time you ride with Fair. You can schedule rides with Fair to pick you up immediately or as far as 30 minutes to 7 days in advance, eliminating the need for last-minute calls and allowing you to pre-schedule pickups in locations other than your home city. Perfect for those traveling for business or for fun. So don't forget to stop on by and download that free Fair app and use the coupon code DUDES10 every time you ride with Fair to get 10% off your ride. That's right, don't forget, the coupon code is DUDES10. So be like dudes and beer, everybody. Party safe, use fair, and drink responsibly. Oh, yeah. Here we go with the cookout. Cats and boots and 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 What's that is ABV the best on one. I have shit. no idea. I have no idea. And that's got alcohol in it? Yeah, right? It's supposed to. A, Dude, if it's oh. over four, it that's insane. Be... Mm, that's uh, pretty tasty. I think that might just be straight root beer, bro. It might just be straight root beer. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Watch it be like six and a half, maybe. Like, there's yeah. no way. No, no, there's no yeah. way. No, I, I think it's just a it. straight root beer. Yeah. That's all right. That's I've okay. had, I've had me good. a few sessions so yeah. far. We're about to open up the grill. We got some good stuff going on. I got us some fucking old school Chuck Steaks. Nice thick Chuck, Chuck steaks. Chuck steaks. Those are going on. Chuck Nelson brought guy. some brats. I some also brats. made some, some uh, garlic and onion potatoes, Ooh. and we've got Aww. some uh, we've got some uh, nice cinnamon apples for dessert. Holy what? Smokies! So I'm yeah, make it speaking dessert. of Smokies, <laughs> let's get it going. Yeah, let's get uh, this grill Go going. ahead, guys. Talk for a second or two while I get things going on the grill. Well, yeah. first off, so Chris is getting up from his chair. He's setting down the headphones. He's yep. walking over to the grill. The grill, ladies and gentlemen, is just fantastic. We're talking about a four yeah. burner, thirty six thousand BTU grill. Beautiful grill, man. Uh, we got two stacks up there. It's uh, black with a nice stainless steel top, thermometer built in. Uh, I think we're running that temperature. Yeah, yeah, I think we're running about three eighty, three eighty five right now. Chris is laying down some steaks. Do you hear that sizzle? Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, do you hear that the sizzle? sizzle? That meat just... We got the steaks going on it's sideways to get our nice there. little burn grills. Right. Oh, man. No chicken. No chicken. <laughs> uh, we got a cat over here looking to want to go got back Leon. in. Leon. Little Leon over here. Leon. Is his last name Bridges? No. No? Are you licking your fingers after handling raw meat? Damn right. What a smart yeah. individual. What a smart, <laughs> <laughs> smart individual. It's steak, dude. It's not pork. That's true. That's I'm not true. afraid. Yeah, I'm, I'm no, I feel you. Tab these with a little. I like it red. Was that Worcestershire? Yeah, just a little yeah. Worcestershire on top. Yeah. Woo, that's oh, I'm sure the audience going. hears that just fine. Yeah. I'll let those sit for a little while. Hell yeah. <laughs> let, it, let it simmer. Little Simma yeah. Simma. Who's this? Simma uh, David Schwimmer. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. How do you say his last name? Uh, Schwimmer? Uh-huh. Uh, simmer down now. Yeah. Uh, simmer, down. Uh, simmer down. Simmer down. Simmer down, simmer down now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who's this? David mm. Schwimmer? Yeah. Shimmer down now. <laughs> I saw a movie with that dude, man. It was about the plastic boobs. The history of implants or boobs, and he was a doctor. No, that was a great Remember? movie, man. Yeah, boob doctor. Know. Yeah. Boob yeah. Doctor. No, that yeah. was made by HBO. It came out yep. right after Band of Brothers. Yep. Oh shit. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. and it actually covered because um, Houston was the home base for no breast way. implants Seriously. originally. And that's where he was based out of. That's what the movie was ah, about. That's interesting to know. I didn't know it was Houston. It was about the Houston breast doctor, yeah. He was the one who, like, really pioneered yeah. giving you the good ones. Giving you the good ones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> giving you the good ones. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's interesting, though. It was, a, it was actually a really well-done movie. It was fantastic. David Schwimmer actually has some reach um, whenever he gets into it. He did a great job in Band of Brothers, I thought. Yeah, yeah, he did. When it's when it's no. a, a boob uh, movie, I'd like to have reach too. <laughs> oh, yeah, wow. yeah, was, exactly. That yeah. was that was very high school, but good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was good. <laughs> reach yeah. Way to stay on point. Reach up on it. <laughs> well, <laughs> reach for the stars. You know, we recently watched some movies uh, over the Christmas holiday. We of course watched some Die Hard. Yeah. You know, yeah. stuff like that. I watched a little Gremlins the other day. Nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, Amy yeah. had me watch some Love Actually. Had to, had to do the chick flick thing uh-huh. with the wife. So you Love know, Actually we, is a great one, it, It's a decent movie. I think it's, not, it's not horrifying, you know. A Christmas love story. It's yeah. good. Yeah, with, you know, just superfluous plot, yeah. you know, all over the place. Right. Um, the other day, I, I went through the went through the Lethal Weapon action. Nice, you know, yeah, some Lethal good Weapon. Christmas movie action. Yeah, we. Uh, so I spent my Christmas over at my folks' place over the oh, weekend, yeah. and uh, Christmas Story was playing. Uh, oh yeah, all day Sunday. Yeah, TNT. Yeah, repeat. Well, we we <laughs> caught it Saturday night, but um, what was really cool um, is Sunday, which was Christmas. My folks and I, we were like so anxious to open gifts, so we did it all Saturday night, which is cool with me. Sure, oh yeah. yeah. And so Sunday uh, morning, my dad's like, hey, uh, uh, one of his buddies is Steve Worthreimer, who owns Continental Club, oh, okay. uh, Jones oh, wow. Bar, and Sea Boys. He's like, Sea Boys. Sea Boys. Shout out to Steve. Anyways, right. uh, he's got a couple jukeboxes that he bought for my dad, and one of them was acting up over at Sea Boys. 
And my dad was like, hey, if we go over to Sea Boys and work on the jukebox, do you want to come with me? I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> and so what turned out to be like a 30-minute repair turned out to be seven hours. Okay? So check this out. We go and meet up with Steve over at Sea Boys and work on the jukebox. And Steve has been wanting to show off his cars to my dad over at his crib. And he lives over in Wollingwood, Rollingwood. And so after we do all the jukebox repairs, we go over to his car shop. He bought Dave's Ultimate Auto. Oh, which wow. is over on Congress. He bought that from oh, Dave. Oh, I Dave think I know Pass. that place. Yeah. And uh, so we went over there and looked at some of the cars they're working on. Some really cool, um, and like a like a eighty one FJ Cruiser. Nice. Cool stuff. Nice. And he's like, "Hey, let's go over to you know. I want to show you my cars." And it was like, "Cool." And, and he was trying to get a hold of one of his buddies who was a motorcycle collector because my dad and I are both really into motorcycles. No. No, right? <laughs> so my dad and I are following Steve, and he starts taking this other turn, and my dad's like, I bet that guy called him and says, hey, I'm at the house. So we follow him over to uh, who turns out to be Victor to his house, and we pull up, and he's got this garage doors open, and first car I see yeah. is a 2012 Aston Martin DB9. Nice. What? Are you yeah, freaking serious? $260,000 race car. Yeah. And so I see the Aston Martin. I'm like, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> so we go in there. He's got just like mint, mint cars, classic cars, oh, like 39 beautiful. Mercury's just... And then we go and you walk into the garage and take a right, and there's like 60 motorcycles. He's got like three aerial square fours, like wow. just incredible bikes. He's got the brand new Damn. Ducati Duval. Oh, wow. And he's got this, he's got and, like. Uh, you know, here's my question Where the hell do you find time to ride them? Exactly. Yeah. Huh. He yeah, doesn't. Where the hell do you even find time in the day to ride those But to shits? pull all of these bikes out, Chris, he's got to move all of these cars. The only way to get in to all of these 60 motorcycles in his 30 cars oh my is God. two <laughs> car garage. Car. That's, that's Maybe I, I, I over-exaggerated. Yeah. He had four cars and 60 motorcycles. Jeez, but to get to those motorcycles, all of these I'm cars not gonna, have to be pulled out. I'm not going to lie as a man who has 10 guitars, right. eight keyboards, right. four rack mount synths. You know, I'm not going to deny the collecting aspect. Right. But yeah. whenever you're talking about that, that's kind of like utilitarian at some point. I mean, uh, granted, there is some collector's items in there that you probably ain't going to drive too much. Right. It's more the prestige of, like, there's, like, 10,000 of them left and I have one. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah you know, exactly. That kind of stuff. That's pretty much how it was. And what was really interesting is um, uh, the owners of Revival Cycles, which I'm a big fan of, which was Alan and Stefan, uh, they were there. Because they pretty much did a lot of the work on the bikes he owns. Damn, yeah. and I, that's awesome. And I was wearing my revival shirt because it's just a comfortable shirt, and I was working. And I and, and I walk up, and there was a Porsche in the driveway. It was a Porsche Tur- uh, Targa, a '91. No, it was an '89 Porsche oh, 89. Uh, Carrera. And uh, I was like, "Ooh, nice Porsche!" All right. And Steve is like, "I don't know whose Porsche that is." And we walk up, and I see Alan. I'm like, "Oh, that's Alan's Porsche." And I wear my shirt. I'm like, "Hey, guys." I'm not, like, no consequence, or no uh, coincidence. You're like, yeah, yeah, right, whatever. Uh, Anyways, it was just a fucking blast, dude. That is dope, dude. Yeah, that was so much fun, but I, I kind of got off subject. I was kind of just talking about my holiday weekend. That's all right, dude. That's what it's all about. And that was your holiday weekend. Heck yeah, it was. that was yeah. your holiday weekend. That's yeah. a badass holiday weekend. What did you do, steve Oh, yeah. shit. I just did the normal thing, you know, hanging out with the family at home, eating too much turkey, and... Ham and um, enjoying some movies on TV and yeah. stuff like that. Oh, yeah. uh, just normal stuff. Um, holidays to me is like you always eat too much food, and you know it's like time to invest in like either a gym membership now or a damn treadmill. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We had some crazy times down in Houston. We'll be going there for New Year's. So. Sweet. But, yeah, it was it was pretty wild. We went to my dad's house, had Christmas with my mom and brother and all that. And, nice. You know, got to go to the Knights of Columbus Christmas party, which is Ooh, always a That's kind of cool. Well, it's it's not like the full-on Knights. It's kind of a closed circle of guys. Uh-huh. Oh, right on. But it's super fun, super fun. There's about 10 or 12 of us that hang out. And, oh. You know, all the husbands and wives, and everybody gets to get together for the night and just kind of hang out, catch up. All that kind of stuff. So, we love doing it. Oh, We're yeah. looking at going to actually with the baby to Boston next year. Cool. So, very cool. 
That would be fun. That I don't know if a, we we had a podcast since then, but we uh, right? the motorcycle chapter that I belong with, which uh-huh. is which is Cherokee. We had you our. You grab me a beer whenever you come back, Steve. Sure thing. Dude, those steaks smell so insane. <laughs> Holy shit, that smells so good. Like, I don't want to talk right now. Yeah. I do I do a pretty good job. It's simply salt and pepper. I know, but it's the Worcestershire. I love the smell of that shit. I uh, know, no, that's the trick. You got to put just a little bit of Worcestershire on there yeah. to get yeah. that crisp. Yeah. Get that crisp. It's, yeah. Well, uh, Cherokee Chapter, we had our Christmas party up at our oh, president's. Oh, sweet. Yeah, our, the president of Cherokee Chapter lives in Georgetown. Thankfully, he lives so close. Actually, he... Which was funny, he retired as president at the party, and Greg Nelson uh, became president. I don't know where he lives, and I hope he lives close, because when we have Christmas parties, it's going to be at his crib. But anyways, that was a blast. Good. I just, I don't know, man. I love the holidays. Me too. Me too. And everyone's like, why? Why? And I'm like, look, man, it's not, it has nothing to do with whatever your stigma is about these holidays to me there's more opportunities to do things in one solid month than i really have the opportunity to do in you know six months out of the year you know yeah i would rather have like something going on every weekend all through you know november and december you know christmas parties well and it's literally the fact of like i said like the night's party Right. Um, it's one of the only times in the year I see those guys. Every once in a while, I'll catch Matt or someone like that on a weekend whenever I'm in town for work, and you know I'll stop by and have a beer on my way to my mom's house. Right. You know at his place. Um, but like my Jordan family, uh, my uncle Joe and Gay just bought a beautiful home in Friendswood, and oh, they put on Friendswood eight three two. Thing. He's the one that gave me the turntable. Cool. Thank you so much, Uncle Joe. Got to get a needle, but. Friends, um, nice. Can't wait, can't wait, and yeah, beautiful place, and literally the first time in a decade that we've all been together. Nice, first time in a decade, like just crazy shit goes on. So it was fun, it was great, it was a it was a good trip. It was something every day, you yeah. know. Um, it's always busy at Christmas, but yes, it's it was super fun. It was super fun. I was very. It is. It is. It's worth it. You're. You, I don't know how you are and how other people are, but well, me myself. I mean, I don't get stressed out, but I'm like, oh, I gotta do. Th- oh, there's this and there's this. But when you finally get to it, you're like, dude, this was fucking worth it. Right. This well, was the worth the hour drive, will, the three hour drive, or paying the fifty dollars to bring a couple bottles of wine and a side plate. Because when you get there, it's going to be fun. Like right. I've never been to a shitty holiday party. Or a shitty holiday get together. It's it's always a great time because I feel like as soon as like November seventeenth hits, right. people are like, Oh, here it comes. I'm yeah. feeling this and like <laughs> this big mood just comes over everyone, everyone's just yeah. really happy and like let's party, let's have a great time. You yep. know? I mean, at least that's I don't know. That's how I feel about it. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, it definitely the holidays does that. It also has, like, a huge depressive effect on a bunch of people. It could. It, it absolutely. Does. It did for me for years. Right. I did not enjoy Christmas. Um, it just, it, it rang a lot of bad things for me. And it was right. something that really got me to thinking about the the human coil of mankind. Yeah. Instead of thinking about the spiritual and the good things, right? Um, mm-hmm. Focusing on the blessings and the good stuff, right. I was getting caught up in the mortal coil of things, and you know, I can see where not, that not yeah. really enjoying the holiday right. at all, um, mm-hmm. at all, for years. Sure, uh, and my attitudes change now. Things are different, um, and I'm happy for that because yeah. I did used to love Christmas, right? And I'm glad to be back to a point where I am and where I can just be like, "Hey, guys, if that's how y'all want to do it, go do it that way." That's not what I'm about. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what a what a strange, odd um, end to Christmas with the with the death of. Um, wow, well, it was George Carrie Michael. Fisher, I thought it was and George first. Michael. Yeah, George Michael's I on the day of Christmas, yeah. having I, a hit last Christmas. Yeah, had, see, you know? I knew, 
I knew Carrie Fisher was having some complications. Me too. Yeah. I didn't hear anything about George Michael. Me either. Well, yeah, he had pneumonia a year or so ago, oh, stuff okay. like that. He's had mm-hmm. some things on and off throughout yeah. the years, and they haven't released anything for certain about the true cause of the death. Well, um, what was the most depressing thing is what his boyfriend was saying, is that no one was there for him, and yeah. he was on his own, and yeah. that's just got to fucking suck. All right. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I just. I feel like if I'm going out, I want, like, I'm going to go out in a vein by, like, jumping into a volcano. Right. Right? Oh, yeah. Or, like, a couple people on my deathbed. I'm like, hey, guys, you know, party when I'm done. And you know? Just make sure your but head your hits first in the volcano. Oh, I'm skydiving straight down, like, yeah. going straight down it's into like a volcano. no shoot, no, bro. Of course not. No, no shoot. shoot. But I just... Everyone asks, like, why do you want to do that? Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's like, what if there's something magical inside the volcano? You don't know. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, you're going to burn up? Like, yeah, I might, but who fucking knows? Yeah. Dude, if I know that the doctor says you only have 24 hours to live, I'm fucking skydiving into yeah. a live fucking volcano. Right. <laughs> 2,000 feet up, I see that yellow molten lava. Yeah. I'm aiming for it. I'm no shoot. For it. I am just going nuts. Why not? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, live Why life. Live not? life to yeah. the fullest. You That's know? the cheapest funeral that you can ask them. There's True no that. ashes to yeah. throw out overboard. Yeah. There's no coffin to buy. <laughs> let the fucker burn up before he hits the volcano. Yeah, let the fucker hit. Or <laughs> I go down into the volcano, be some sort of god, yeah. and destroy y'all. There you go. Right? You can be Zenu, man. Yeah. <laughs> you can be you Zenu. Never, <laughs> you never fucking know. <laughs> Uh, oh, you don't know Zenu? That's the god of Scientology, but they don't tell oh. you until. You, yeah, they don't uh, tell oh, you yeah. that until you're a certain level. Zenu, yeah. yeah. yeah the one yeah. with the big vacuum? Ron L. Hubbard. <laughs> The one with the big vacuum. I just bought my, my, my first lesson. I spent $100 million. No, I oh, yeah. <laughs> it used to be a website, clambake.com, that actually had. Uh, you know, some dark secrets until it got shut down. But uh, come to find out, it's all coming out now, you know. Right. Uh, it wasn't just the one person. Uh, and uh, But no, uh, no. the George Michael thing caught me off guard because it was during Christmas. It was on Christmas Day. Uh, you know, I know he had some um, health issues. Pneumonia was going on. They actually did a tracheotomy. Uh and um, there's actually some some photos of him, and and if you look closely, you can see like the incisions on his neck, you know, and um, and to think he had such like a beautiful voice and all, you know, yeah. and and um, and I'm not, I, I never really heard anything. I don't think you know since he had that, but I do know that reports were and that he was working and in the process of a new album. Oh yeah, yeah, you know. Um, but I mean, anytime something happens, uh, like cutting on your throat or something, I would think it would like compromise your sound or it your can. vocal. Yeah, I would it think. Can you know? Tracheotomy, not so much. Yeah. Really? I mean, once Seriously? it heals up, yeah, yeah, you got like a seven, Seriously? five to seven yeah. day window oh, okay. recovery. To... It's not the actual vocal box. It's just like you know. right. All a tracheotomy is is just allow oxygen. Yeah, because yeah. your esophagus is already it's closed before up. your vocal yeah. box. Right. And he did say during that uh, time when they had to do that when he was in the hospital and he was actually in and out of consciousness, uh, uh, consciousness mm-hmm. during uh, some of this. Um, this health issues he had back in I think 2012 or some other that he said he didn't know how long he was going to be able to live or something like that. Um, so um, I don't know what other health issues. I mean, it's still fresh, so a lot of stuff hadn't come out yet. But um, you know, it's it's uh, it, it was a definite shock that you know we lost such a great artist. I believe that uh, had numerous hits uh, that everybody can recall at least one or two or something. A hero uh, to thousands and millions yeah, of people. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. mean, um, he was he it, was an incredible person. I mean, Jesus, man, um, that's the iconic legend from the '80s that had some beautiful songs, yep. beautiful voice, um, and died at such a young age. You know, little little sample guys. You know, fifty three is not very old. Oh. Ooh, look at this. Get the fuck out of here. What? Are you serious? Mmm, damn, that's delicious. (laughs) Mm. 
Sorry, folks. You just put Worcestershire, that's it? No, salt and pepper oh, okay. on the steak, but cover it in Worcestershire while it's Dude, cooking. Dude, that's like the, the real trick is covering it in butter before you eat it. Yeah. Oh. That's, that's where great, the loveliness dude. is. Dude, it's a good steak. Oh, God. Dude, that's like uh, a, a steak from a high-dollar restaurant. Really? Yeah, that's, all right. that's, that's, yeah, that's like a $30, yeah, I mean. That flavor is going to awesome. I don't want to say Texas Light and Cattle because it's a little higher than that. <laughs> Somebody knows how to cook steak. That's good. That's good. Mm, that's good. Damn. Yeah. Well, I like cooking. Yeah. It was always a go-to job for me. <laughs> yeah. I like anywhere food. I moved. I could always go cook. <laughs> yeah. You know that's one of the jobs. Um, every time I go in Oak Hill, I always pass up Austin Pizza Garden. Right. Um, or when I'm on Congress, pass up um, Magnolia Cafe. Those two jobs, Magnolia Cafe and Austin Pizza Garden, were of all the cooking jobs that I've had. I've, I've sous chef I've sautéed, wow. I've been line cook, I've been prep cook. Of all the cooking jobs that I've had in my lifetime, those have been the most legitimate, fun, amazing jobs where I've not only had fun working there and cooking yep. and knowing the menu... But the fucking people, down to the management, down to the fucking owner. Dude, the owners of Magnolia were legit. My favorite was the owner of Awesome Pizza Garden, Brian. Huh. That fool would come in. We would be jamming ween, okay? <laughs> like the pod. Yeah. Or, or like nice. white pepper. Just crazy fucking music. Ultra fucking loud. We're all stone out of our minds. Yeah. Drinking on the job. And Brian would just be back there working the oven, dude. Just <laughs> working the brick oven yeah. with the fucking pizza slices. Right. And just, like, nodding his head, like, trying to get... Yeah. Like, trying to understand this music. Yeah. And we're all just kids, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, 23 yeah. to 31. And this dude's in his, like, late 40s. Uh, that's the and, way to do it. Man. Oh, that's God, the way he was to just do it. so legit. Yeah. And, like, just the most legit human being. Yeah. Yeah, Brian is just... Guys, if y'all are listening, I'm sure you are, because I forgot we're still on the podcast. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Go Shout check out. out... Right? Yeah. Shout out to Awesome Pizza Garden in Oak Hill. Get the Neptune if, if the pizza. The Neptune pizza will blow your fucking mind. If you want a good muffaletta, you go to fucking Awesome Ooh. Pizza Garden, dude. I'm telling you. They just won an award. Nice. From the Chronicle. They're Did in they? an old vintage building, yeah. which actually is speaking a historical the, mark. I was going to say, speaking of the building, while you were there, have you heard any stories of the place being haunted? Okay, so it's supposed to there be on the a haunted... Story it's on a haunted tour. Yeah. Uh, I've been in a couple eerie situations, but I right. can't really explain what happened. Right. I know there's a couple tables in a certain part of the Well, it's uh, upstairs. There's an upstairs oh, dining room, which is just a fantastic, beautiful place. Yeah. Like, when, it's, when everyone's there and things are happening yeah you don't get that feeling huh like the only time when I ever you're got alone it, i was alone okay so uh upstairs you can you take to get up there when you walk into the restaurant there's a staircase to your right and that's how you get up there right but from the kitchen when we bring up food and drinks and stuff like that there's a staircase into the back kitchen huh. and um we have trash cans up there yeah and one day we had like a 30 top party up there and I went up there about 9.45 when everything was closed, all the lights are off, uh-huh. just to grab the trash cans and bring them out and throw them out. Yeah. So I go up there. Uh-oh. Lights are off. Fans are off. Um, AC? I don't know. And that's the thing is I don't know about the AC. But uh-huh. all I know is I went up into a dark room and I was able to see the trash can, uh-huh. grab the trash can and turn around and went down the stairs. <laughs> right. And as you're going down the stairs, you can see all the textile rugs hanging from the wall. Nice. Yeah. These walls, these fucking rugs just started flipping. Like yeah. like if a fan was behind it, like doing that kind of... Really? Yes. Yeah. And I'm like... Dude. And I'm doing this because it's dark, yeah. but I can see the trash can. And that's yeah. about it. And I can kind of see the Mexican textiles. Uh, and I'm looking at that shit, and I just get, like, fuck. Like, I get goosebumps just talking about yeah. this. Like, oh, Yeah. I get these crazy cold goosebumps. Was your mind at that moment thinking that it was the AC? Did you, were you thinking of something rational to explain what you were seeing at Wait that point? Way to Nelson him, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a no ghost story. I yeah. mean, I just what I what I thought I saw because it was dark. I blinked a few times yeah. to see if I was just like, man, I've been in high. some I've been in some strange situations when I worked at the country club in Maine at Falmouth Country Club. Um, 
I spent a lot of late nights there by myself. Yeah. I I worked in the kitchen at night, and then night shift would leave, and I would clean the place. So I'd be there until like three in the morning. Jesus, easily, you know. And yeah, man, there was one night where I finished vacuuming upstairs, and as I came downstairs, literally heard a party going on. Oh wow. Ooh. <laughs> like people milling around. Uh, dude. It's like the shining. Glasses and <laughs> shit. Well, I remember hearing stories about people living um, on like Indian uh, reservations. Oh, where yeah. their house is built in the sixties, right? But no, they were no. reservations for the seventeen hundreds. And coming home to hearing Indian like the story, tribal music. Like native Indian music. The story yeah. of poltergeist. The movie The Poltergeist is based on the Newport subdivision out in Crosby, Texas. Whoa. Where my aunt lives. Oh, well. I've been out there years ago. I've had some odd experiences. Yeah. But literally what happened was it was a potter's field, unmarked graves, sharecroppers, hmm. stuff like that. My grandma was and a And they, they went to... Uh, build this was an unmarked cemetery everything else like the locals knew about it but it wasn't on any maps it wasn't surveyed you know it was like mm. it was in the back of this sharecrop property um, that eventually became open land and then eventually got bought up for this housing development mm-hmm. and as these people started digging a pool they started finding remains oh they shit. started finding people um, and since then odd things have been reported in the Newport subdivision there have been wow. numerous people there are a couple houses that are still like I'm getting the fuck out of here not full <laughs> not occupied there have been numerous people that live there had no instance you know but yeah it's it's wild man dude that's it's crazy wild, there's dude. some <laughs> there's some intense experiences out there I've had quite a few of them <laughs> um, that's one reason why I do not doubt that end of things. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't doubt ghost experience. I don't doubt experience with the supernatural. Um, I've never had a UFO experience. I've seen some strange things in the sky. I saw some. I've seen some strange shit. I've seen some strange shit, and and I've debunked myself of thinking it was a UFO because what I saw in the research that I did really add up more than to a unidentified flying object. Yeah. But um, my friend and I, Ben, we were driving uh, back home, or back out to my crib, because uh, I was, yeah, yeah, I was renting a, a, a trailer down on Barton Springs, and we were mm. coming from Oak Hill, and we see drippings, or we see uh, Albertsons, and we're driving back, and for some reason we both look at Albertsons. I don't know why. It's just because when you take that wide yeah, yeah, hill, yeah. it's right there. It's right You're there. doing this, and... Albertsons is doing that you see it when you start taking that bend and uh, we just I see this crazy like red dot kind of do this weird pattern just disappear Mm. and I'm like whoa fuck did you see that yeah and he did and I was like you saw that he's like yeah I'm like wow that was crazy we both fucking saw that and um, the swamp gases well (laughs) (laughs) for some reason like he had gotten into, I don't know, some like uh, some electrical theory that he was uh, yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. in school and did some crazy research yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. But he's like, I think that was ball lightning. And I'm like, dude, that was a fucking like, UFO. I don't know what the fuck that was. Yeah. And so anyways, we do some research on it, and, and it turns out that there is a real thing called ball lightning. Yes, and what is. it is, yeah. it's it's... It's positive charged ions in right. lightning. Right. So what lightning does, it strikes from the ground up. Right. Because of the grounding of the earth magnetic core. The ground up. But huh. what what li- ball lightning does yeah. is since it's so positive charged ions, exactly. what it does is it finds more charged particles in the so in the atmosphere in the topographic in the topographic sphere that create a premeditated path. So. Within just a matter of fucking ultra split seconds that we can't even comprehend, right. it sees all these charged particles. So it takes that path hmm. with the path of least resi- you know, least yep. resistance, huh. kind of like how ohms work. Very but it's the complete opposite. Right. And so it just does this crazy shit. Right. And so to the human eye, it's like a crazy pattern. People take it right. serious, like oh, it's a message. Like right. oh, there's a square box. You know. 
Well, uh, well, and granted, the, the the circumstances for ball lightning are rare. It is. It's a very rare phenomenon, especially uh, angel hair, which was uh, a mm-hmm. phenomenon of um, uh, heavy dew mm-hmm. actually being come uh, atomized from the ground huh. and creating hair, which looked like yeah. angel hair from the ground. People are like, oh, it's a sign from Jesus. But what it is is just really right. heavy moisture huh. in a cold situation when the Earth's core is right. at a certain temperature. Well, I think people were huh. attributing it more to chemtrails and stuff like that as yeah. well. Yeah, okay. all sorts of crazy yeah, logistics. It, it looked yeah. like crazy looking spider webs across yeah. grass and stuff it's like that. It's very crazy looking. Yeah. yeah, it's really wild. Wow. Really wild. Yeah. And it's it's strange, you know. It you is. start getting into that kind Holy of stuff. Uh, you know, I... I love talking myth. I love talking yeah. mystery. I love talking that stuff. But there's, <laughs> there is so and much the science of it. behind it too. It's it, even fucking more interesting. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. like it, you it's know, not one of my favorite. It, but what their theory is I, of what it could be? Yeah, because right. yeah. we still don't understand, right. and we can't even understand yeah. what protons do. Right. The split screen experiment, dude. Uh, electricians still don't understand how electricity works. We're still like fathomed by the idea of how electricity fucking works. True that. And then we yeah. see these phenomena. Right about, about that. And we're like, whoa. And it's just it's incredible to get the the well, crit, like the, like the side landed. that people think it's like, you know, alien beings well, to the like, scientific side. I've, I watched the show it, you know? on Netflix. It's a Netflix original um, White Rabbit Project. Oh, yeah. And it's it's with the three other people from uh, Mythbusters. And oh, they actually guys, take like on these different scientific concepts and stuff. And the last one was speed. And Tori took on the concept of the land speed record um from the silver bullet, yep, that was made way back in the day. That was actually an electric car, like back in the early 1900s. Huh? And he was like, through doing research, I found out that every land speed record was held by an electric car. Yeah, <laughs> right. every one of them. Right. Every one of them. <laughs> right. Every one of them. So they actually built this car, and like, dude, this thing went like 82 miles an hour. Like it was, it was trucking, man. Yeah. You know. So it was pretty impressive in using early 1900s technology, you know, modern adaptations of right. the early 1900s technology. Right. And it was it was pretty incredible. So yeah, you know, there there were a lot of sound ideas that are still there. There are a lot of uh, you know patents out for stuff that have never really sure. been explored, yeah. um, especially when it comes to strange energies, mm-hmm. strange powers, generators, things right. like that. There's a lot of work of Nikola Tesla that hadn't been explored fully. Right, right. And that kind of stuff. Absolutely. It is just... Rest in peace. But yeah, like phenomenal stuff. Right. You know, and we're just getting into it now. Inductive charging of yeah. cell phones. And mm-hmm. Right. That yeah. kind of stuff. Those are cool. You know. Well, I, I've really been wanting to get a new car. And uh, I have my heart set on that new Toyota Mira. Yeah, which is a hydrogen fuel cell car. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, They're like twenty three thousand dollars. <coughs> the only problem is, is we don't have any hydrogen stations. hydrogen fuel cell stations right. here in Texas. There's like maybe seventeen or twenty five. Right. And you're gonna have to electrolyze California? your own hydrogen. That's the new. And you're gonna have to electrolyze your own hydrogen. That's the thing. Is to build a hydrogen fuel cell right. charging station is really expensive. and and do you think the danger is that they've already you know, proposed and they keep blowing down. up. Yeah, and shit. right. Do you, do you think there's any truth in no. that? Well, like, yeah, sure, I mean, yeah, of I mean, there was. but then again, guess what? Not Gas now. is the same thing if you throw a match of to it, right? Of course it is. So it's like we're not doing no. that. The dangers yeah. of a, if you're yeah, a toy- hydrogen, no. hydrogen Toyota, Toyota would have not gone into that line of people, production if there was any sort of thought about right. here's, here's the right. thing. Here's the thing. But it's a gas piece. Yeah, but it doesn't explode the way you think it does. Even compressed hydrogen doesn't explode the way you think it does. Right, true. People see the footage of a hydrogen-filled balloon. Yeah. uh, A hydrogen-filled Zeppelin, you know. Right. Yeah, it sucks in. And it catches fire. Right. And burns to the ground. Now, if you notice, there's a really bright flash there at the very beginning that's... Right. right. That's literally every bit of the hydrogen in that thing right. exploding. Seems, seems like at it stays point, contained in its own at thing, one right? point. The rest of the dirigible that comes down when it crashes 
is all the hot air that's mm -hmm. keeping it afloat as the balsa wood and canvas burns. Mm -hmm. um, that's what caused the crazy fire. Right. Most of the time, and they've shown it with like penetration tests and stuff like that, you're going to see like a small blue jet of flame and then it's gone. And then it's gone. Huh. Then it's gone. Mm -hmm. um, if the tank is compromised, hydrogen burns so fast. Yeah, it's it's not it's, it's not like don't even have time. it's not like combustion like right. gasoline where suddenly there is a rupture in a pressurized tank and it's misted and that causes a huge explosion. Right. Suddenly, mm -hmm. um, the explosions with hydrogen fuel cells are not really as crazy. Yeah. Um, hmm. So. Yeah. In a way, it almost sounds a little like, safer. There's been some crazy to, uh, explosions. <laughs> I would have used that. Yeah. There's yeah. been some crazy yeah. explosions lately with the Tesla cars. Yeah, true, true. And, and that's all battery op. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll start looking at the uh, Galaxy phones and stuff like that. The, yeah, the same exploding, concept. Huh? The yeah, the exploding of the note. You got the same Galaxy thing. You note, got the same thing with all the uh, all the hoverboards that were recalled because they were exploding. And in January, yeah. if you still have a Samsung Galaxy 7 Note, um, or Note, whatever it may be called, but uh, if you still 7. have one, uh, they were trying to recall them, but people have been reluctant, like they're still using yeah. them, they're going right. to shut them down totally. Like, if oh, you no, have, they down. literally tell you on the plane, yeah. like, we want your phone off. Yeah. But if you have one at home, come January, there's a certain day in January, they're cut, they're like, it's Turn dead. It off. It's dead. It yeah. will no longer work? Yeah. They huh. told me that today. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, good, good. Yeah. I mean, it's a major recall, and it's a major. They're trying issue. to get them all back. It happens all the time, even in automo in automotive industry. You know, there are recalls, safety recalls. I've stuff had that a happens. bunch just in the last forty eight hours. Wow, TSBs, really? TSBs, yeah. Not recalls, but TSBs, which stands for Technical Service Bulletin. It's, 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 it's like a precursor to a recall, right? right? So, Sounds like, like uh. There is a cruise switch on Fords uh -huh. that uh, we get stuck on and actually cause a fire. Oh, what the hell? Not killing anyone, yeah. but causing a fire and some cars burning to the ground because they weren't home. Jeez. So Holy shit. Something yeah. like that is, burning. is a recall, yeah. but this is just right <laughs> before that. And so a lot of these are like, um, you know oil pressure solenoid sensors and the VVT on Hondas. Mm -hmm. Like, I got a car that's in, and it's a Honda with VVT. These, sounds more, these sound more electrical issues, right? No. They're, no? they're powertrain, oh, they electrical, are okay. AC. A little bit of everything, oh, I guess. a little bit of everything. Yeah. yeah, there's a blend door actuator TSB on Volkswagen Jettas. Huh. Which is electrical, you yeah. know? Uh, but there's no way of saying, like, a totally electrical issue, no. No, it's it yeah, and it's and that's the thing is a technical service bulletin is it's kind of like a non threatening thing, but it's just like, Hey, look. Us over here at the but, Ford dealership. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm over here. I'm Mom. not calling you a pepperoni, <laughs> but I'm just saying. But you was a pepperoni. Right. No, all they're saying is like, Hey, we've noticed like fifteen hundred incidences yeah. on two thousand eleven Honda elements. Yeah. This fucking sensor is failing. So then they put out a technical silver bolts, and it's just like going to H E B and be like, "Oh, hey, that uh, you know, that baby chair you just bought. Recall. Yeah, that yeah. baby chair you just bought. Well, right. it's been killing babies. Oh, Jesus so you Christ. might want to return that. Yeah, you might just want to. Like, if you like Junior, you might want to return. That. Yeah, I mean, it's like that, but not on such heavy circumstances. But yeah, right. It, exactly. It's really cool, like because you you really get into the vehicle and and really get behind the manufacturer and how their design and engineering went into the car. Huh. It's, it's just fucking amazing. Like the TSB on that the Honda Element, there was like 11 pages, right. and I read it all up before I handed it over to the technician. Oh, yeah. I read it all up. Learned it. Just, yeah. It's incredible. Information. You ate it up. Yeah, that's pretty fun. awesome. Well, and that's just it. You know, it was funny because before the show started, um, as we wrap up here, we you were talking about how great it feels to be back in a oh. shop and doing what you love to do and doing what you were trained to do. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that's a, that is a lot of what this show's about. Right. Is literally, um, you know, people's passions, doing right. what you love doing on the daily, and the fact that you were back to doing that is fantastic. Yeah, it to is me, actually. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it too. You so seem like you're so you're happy. enjoying your your I life am. more. I am. Yeah. I dude, I can't tell you 
literally how Swisher was killing me. Like it, wow. I was, I was rotting away with that yeah. job. Yeah. Was wow. Literally yeah. rotting away. You seem Absolutely. like you got more energy tonight. I'm so happy. <laughs> well, I'm so much happier. Yeah. This stuff is ready to be pulled Woo! off the grill. How about Steaks that? Steaks are rested. Brats are ready. Come I think on over, our ladies and gentlemen. Are ready, everything Resting else. So brody. on that note, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. Yay. Thanks so much Cheers. for being a part of tonight's podcast. For being a part of all the podcasts. Yeah. Uh, we've got some exciting news coming up. So oh, uh, keep your ears to the ground on the Dudes and Beer Facebook page. Don't be and, a stranger. And, uh, you know, hey, oh. everybody. Remember, happy holidays. Do something good for New Year's. Woo, woo. Be safe. Use fair. If you can't be good, be, be good, good at it. it. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Dudes and Beer Podcast. To listen to our live audio streams, tune in at dudesandbeer.com or spreaker.com forward slash dudesandbeer. You can find our episodes on soundcloud.com as well as the Google Play and iTunes market. You can also find us on YouTube, Stitcher, and your favorite podcast service. Dudes and Beer is a proud member of the Revolution Digital Group family of podcasts. Thanks for listening, everybody, and until next time, drink responsibly.